Welcome back to the Neutral Medical Report. We're joined by our expert panel for preparedness, civil defense. I call the first level of martial law, which is a bank holiday, which I think is quite possible to happen this year. And Earth Changes. And uh, opening up this very hot story is John Moore. John, uh, any new developments in the area of your whistleblowers? We had an interesting interview uh, uh, yesterday with uh, Joyce Riley. I guess it was actually a Wednesday. Right. Right. Uh, and uh, the, um, I guess the discussion was that she wanted paper, and very hard to, to get paper when you have a. Well, there is. Here, here's what happens, Doctor Bill. And by the way, thank you for having me. Um, these men, and my sources have all been men. The majority of them are men. They go to these meetings where uh, they're not allowed to take notes or have a cell phone or any way to uh, record or photograph anything that's going on, and. Um, they're basically threatened uh, with uh, punishment of some sort if they reveal what they're told at the briefing. So there's not going to be a paper trail. But I'm not alone in this, and, and um, I have a lot of respect for Joyce and the work she's done these, these past 15, 16 years. But uh, we have Pastor Butch here on, on GCN who's got his own uh, now four sources, a lieutenant who's gone public and, and three private sources Pastor Butch has. We have uh, Doug Hagman. Uh, who has his own radio show and his DHS in, insider. Uh, and that's just the seven, eight that I'm aware of. Uh, that would be eight different sources, all basically saying the following, that between now and Memorial Day, there will be a contrived economic collapse, which may or may not include a bank holiday. More likely it would. Uh, that will lead to civil disorder. In the meantime, the uh, new uh, draconian anti-gun measures will be passed, and uh, when martial law is instituted, uh, the gun confiscations would begin. Um, March is being looked at by several of these sources as being the month when it will really start getting bad. Uh, so we've got multiple independent sources that don't know each other, uh, all saying essentially the same thing. And remember, by the way, these are all metastable plans. Remember, with the globalists, they have not only a plan A and a plan B, they got a C, D, E, and F, and G. So when things change, just like with the uh, national ID, that was passed back in 2009, and it was kicked down the can. Now they're, it was supposed to be implemented, I think, March between March and May of this year, and now it's been kicked, supposedly, by the government down to 2015. Uh, so right. if it doesn't happen on that date, you know that all the elements are there. It's like if you're looking at a counter and someone's a baker and they have all the components to make pancakes, you can make a pretty good guess that there's pancakes in the mix. Exactly. Uh, well, and that's well, what's well, happening. I need to keep in mind, Dr. Bill, that... Um uh, what's what's going on here uh, is fluid and, of course, is subject to change. And you're right. There's always a plan B and a plan C. And the closer we get to whatever event's going to happen, keep in mind the following. This is very important. The closer we get, the more people have to know because they have to keep bringing in more people as they get closer to the event because, well, and obviously the, they have to. And now, yeah. Joyce made one good comment. If there's anybody out there that has better knowledge, has paper, has any other corroboration, do contact me or John, and of course you're over at the libertyman.com. They can contact us at the Neutral Medical Report, and we know there's military listening because we have contacts all the time inside the military. We have regularly on the show people that are inside government, various departments that come under pseudonyms. So um, we know that lots of people are quote on our side or on the right side. That's right. And they and and uh, what's going on? If if you want things to work out. You don't want to have a disarmed public. I mean, every time that the public's been disarmed, I, I use the, I'm going to rename this now. I'm going to call it the Chopstick Rebellion. Right. Now, right. I told you the story before, uh, and I don't remember the name of the emperor, but I'm going to have to dig it up. But apparently the story is one of the early Chinese emperors decided that he didn't want the public to carry knives. Only his private guard could carry knives. So he decided that everybody who was eating with a knife, and they usually had big knives because they used them for their own work as well as eating, uh, that they would have to eat with chopsticks. So chopsticks originated because an emperor decided he didn't want an armed public. So the very first, if you want to call it, ancient disarmament plan was to force the people to use chopsticks and not legally be able to carry a knife. Well, that, that, that does make sense because uh, uh, chopsticks are an incredibly uh, cumbersome way to try to eat anything. Uh, so, regardless, uh, the the, uh, the battle over firearms is going to heat up and become more intense. And one of the things they're looking for, Dr. Bill, and this is critical, uh, one of the things they're really looking for is a violent pushback from the gun culture. Uh, I, if they don't get it spontaneously, which they probably will, they'll create it. 
because once they get the violent pushback, the threats are uh, to senators, representatives, or staffs, uh, media people. That will give them the, the necessary pretext they need to go ahead and become even more draconian and maybe even do martial law. Well, the thing is, remember now, when they say they're going to target an apartment complex to get one Taliban guy and kill 199 men, women, and children that are not involved, uh, they consider that justified. They've already got FAA under just executive orders from the abominator uh, to put F to, uh, to put air flights of these very dangerous devices in the air that actually have had near flight catastrophes with commercial airliners. And uh, they've stated already in the public media, so people can Google it themselves, that by 2015, well, in two years, they want to weaponize them. They want to have weapons yeah, on these well. on American soil. This is why I encourage people to get their ham radio skills because it's a simple process to for ham radio people to basically make these drones blind with jamming devices, and so that the drone the, the drone will still be flying, but it will not be able to transmit any information back to its headquarters, uh, which basically means it it would be flying blind with no cameras and, and no other sensing devices it could transmit back or ability to actuate ordinances. And, and in, in addition, in addition, ham radio operators can learn how to jam the police frequencies, the National Guard frequencies, cell phone frequencies, so that uh, any police attempting to do harm our military or foreign troops would essentially not be able to talk to each other, let alone their, their higher headquarters. This is all skills that is common and routine within the ham community. Yeah, exactly. My dad was a ham radio operator. My brother is, and I'm actually going to take up hamming in 2013. Uh, I, by the way, everybody should have uh, walkie-talkies, multiple sets, uh, because uh, don't assume that the cell phone towers will go. The very first thing, I was told it by FEMA directly, by the FEMA director, because we were working on Hazmat in 1997, uh, operations and operation top off in dark winter in Colorado. And the very first thing from the manual is they're going to pull the power grid. Even if it doesn't go down, they're actually going to throw the switch. Second is they're going to shut down the Internet, and they're going to shut down public communications through cell phones. And well, radio it, telephone. well it's, it's actually a little better than that. They, they shut down you and I using the cell phones, but they have a way of shutting down uh, everybody except themselves being able to exactly. use cell phones. Exactly. exactly. It's right. selectively. In other words, it's selective. Um, so, John, any other new uh, words from your whistleblowers, any uh, cor further corroboration, any new tweaks on it, uh, anything else coming? Um, not since we talked last week. Uh, well, did I mention the uh, the officer who was, whose family was threatened last week? I don't recall if I did or not. You mentioned that his family was threatened. That right. This is what, a military officer? Yeah, he's a company-grade officer, and we're, we're working to get a safe, a, a safe house set up for his family so he can go ahead and, and have some uh, clear mind to do what he needs to do. In other words, there's a lot of officers that are going to revolt here, but they need to make sure their family are in the clear first. Absolutely, absolutely, because he was considering committing suicide as an alternative to uh, violating his oath of office because they threatened to murder his family if he didn't follow orders. I don't think suicide is a good alternative. I don't think. Well, God I, would like I don't that. either. And, and but yeah. uh, getting a safe a safe house for his family. You get a safe house for your family, and then exactly. stand up. Even if you died uh, standing up, you got to do it. Okay, it's time to stop uh, people quibbling with the fact we're dealing with monsters that want us dead. This is not. We're, we're not. You know, soft well, the, long, right, and, the longer yeah. he can stay alive, covertly damaging from the inside, the better off we all are. Exactly, yeah. And there's a lot of people like that. We have really good people in the CIA, in the Pentagon, in every branch of government, in the military, in the Secret Service. They all know, and there's everybody, even if they've done bad things or would do bad things, they always have a red line in the sand that says, hey, I'll murder, I'll murder that guy in that country, I'll kill these people here, but I'm not going to kill my mother, my sister, or a fellow American. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Bill, I'm going to bail out here and let Ann Morrison carry on from here. Yeah, I really appreciate it, John. Thanks. If there's any major updates, just call me, and we'll put a, a report up on our live stream TV channel, emergency, anytime, day or night. Just give me a shout. And uh, this is a fluid situation. It's to say the time window, well, not an absolute, but the time window is March, April. It fits with Max Kaiser and the financial collapse expected. But the pushback from a, a very aggressive gun bill that's being introduced now is virtually a guarantee. We're back, uh, joined with Ann Morrison and Alexander Bachman. Uh, uh, and I'd like you to kind of update what's going on in the jet stream, the ozone layer, the, the weird things going on in our planet. And by the way, I pulled up some more information about this um, this um, 
as this meteor, the extra asteroid that's coming by, uh, or comet that's coming by, called the D 2012 DA14, which is going to whip by uh, on my birthday around 179 meters, which is around almost 800 feet, um, whip by the Earth. The report that I saw list said it was going to be between 21 and 35,000 miles off the surface. The reports you had back in May have suggested the calculations could be as close as 5,000 miles. Uh, this is closer than actually many of our communication satellites. That gives you an idea how damn close it is. It's really, really close. And this is not a minor uh, object. It's a really big object that if it ever hit the Earth, which it is going to pass by the Earth in 2020 and I think 2028, it, come, it returns. Um, and they're saying, oh, don't worry about it, it's not going to happen. Um, but tell us what's going on in the jet stream and elsewhere because there's some very weird weather in, in uh, you know, Russia and in China and elsewhere, and we have some bizarre signs in the heavens. Well, we do have this asteroid uh, 2012 DA-14, and we've been mentioning it on your show for for at least half a year, maybe three-quarters right. of a year. And uh, it is going to pass between, well, it's going to pass inside the geocentric orbit of satellites. Now, the reason that the um, they call it uh, uh, geocentric Earth-orbiting satellites, geos, is because uh, those satellites are put just inside the magnetosphere. So they know where the magnet, how far out the magnetosphere extends from the Earth, and they place these satellites so that they're inside the magnetosphere, and that's to protect them from the solar wind, which comes from the sun, and also from the interplanetary magnetic force, which mostly comes from the sun. And uh, uh, this asteroid is going to cut uh, closer to the Earth than those satellites are. Now we routinely beam information up to the satellites and then back down. In fact, probably everybody I know gets their news and and entertainment from satellites one way or another. I mean, it may be from a cable company, but the cable company is using a satellite. And uh, this asteroid is big enough that it could wipe out uh, an area the size of um, the country of Luxembourg. And uh, that's that's pretty... That's a big size event. Now, they do say that if you have a telescope or very good uh, binoculars that are on a tripod, this is, I'm going to read this directly so people can line it up. It says, the asteroid will travel rapidly from the southern evening sky into the northern morning sky with its closest Earth approach occurring about 1926 UTC, which would be um, well, we subtract six from that, six from nine. What? <laughs> uh, <laughs> about six o'clock in the morning, I guess. Yeah. Is that is that about right? Six from mm-hmm. the thirteen. No, it'd be about one. I don't know when it's going to approach then. UTC minus six would be thirteen you, you, twenty-six. You, that would be yeah. uh, one o'clock in the afternoon. So I don't know that we're going to be able to see it, but we should be able to see it. And you want to look, uh, but they say from the southern evening sky into the northern morning sky, and we're not going to be in the evening time. We're going to be in the daytime. So it's going to be on the other side of the earth. But the people on the other side of the earth, if they get out a, a telescope or binoculars, and uh, it says about four minutes after its Earth uh, after its Earth close approach, there's a good chance it'll pass into your shadow for about 18 minutes or so. Now that doesn't mean we can't see it because it doesn't just appear instantaneously and then disappear instantaneously. It's just that we won't have the best viewing advantage. So if we wait, or if we look the night before, we may be able to see it. Or if we look the night after, we may be able to see it. Or you might even be able to see it in the daytime because this thing will be re- reflecting the sun. And it's big. It, it's the size of three football fields. It's That's not a small piece of rock. No, that's uh, a big piece of rock. That's a big piece. It's, it's, yeah. 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 And, and so we've got that to look forward to. Now, um, we think that it... it... Looks like we may have lost our connection with Anne. Uh, while we're waiting for Ann, Alexander, are you there? Ah, we didn't get Alexander. Okay. So, uh, 
what I just to get before Anne comes back, let's reconnect with her. Um, what I think is coming, and this is just the best analysis uh, at the moment, and it's going to change as we get more data, more information, more corroboration. 2013 is going to be a year where we're going to have financial gyrations. We're likely to have uh, some form of bank holiday for five to ten days at least. We're going to have a gun grab attempt. Uh, we're going to have uh, state nullification of a much of these federal laws. And we're going to have further divisions in these states that are not going to cooperate with Obamacare and these exchanges for uh, the Obamacare. We're also going to have further legal challenges. We have one from our Association of Physicians and Surgeons, the same association that both Rand and Ron Paul belong to, I have for decades. And that means that uh, Obamacare probably is going to be piecemeally pulled apart. Uh, It's not going to exist. By the end of this year, I expect a good chunk of Obamacare will be gone. The good parts that are there, such as uh, stopping pre-existing conditions, will remain. But I think the bad parts are no cost containment, uh, these death panels, etc., and these exchanges, and the stupid things that are in it, uh, like mandates, etc., like mandated vaccines, they're all going to be gone. And I think you're going to see increasing use of state nullification to get rid of them. And let's get back to your comments about the uh, what's going on with our space weather, etc., and these asteroids. Yeah, anyway, I think that this thing is going to hit on the other side of the Earth, if it hits. And if it does, it'll wipe out a piece of land the uh, size of the state of, of country of Luxembourg. Now you have to understand when they say that the Earth is 70, Earth's surface is 75 percent water, uh, they're not talking just about the northern hemisphere. They're talking about the whole surface of the Earth. In the northern hemisphere, it's only about half water. So it, it, it has a chance of hitting Earth. It would be worse if it hit water. If it hits water, it'll throw a lot of water vapor into the air and we will have what's called a, an impact winter, which wouldn't be too bad because it would solve the drought problem. <laughs> anyway, as I look at the um, jet air, the jet stream, um, it's coming down from the Arctic Circle into right at Russia. So you, you can say that Moscow and uh, surrounding territories are going to be mighty cold this week, and also northern China. In addition, it's coming down over uh, Canada, uh, and there's a big high right over Lake Superior. So it's going to be very cold in the northern section of the country. As far as the southern section of the country, it's covered by a jet stream that is coming from Hawaii. I I know that you've heard about the Pineapple Express. Oh, yeah. So it's going to be warmer in the southern part of the the country. So we've got this... uh, We've got this. We've got two jet streams. We've got a across the United States. The upper one is cold. The lower one is warm. And uh, here in Missouri and probably in California too, we're going to be between the two, which means that we could have some storms travel through that clash of of uh, air streams. Amazing. I hear- and of course, they were having sunburns in Colorado because the ozone layer is thinner. UV light, and you mentioned about the. Uh, particular position of how close the sun is to the earth, uh, that is called. Welcome back, and um, uh, and there's uh, some more things in space weather. We always have the conditions in the next two years that we're likely to have a major CME that will cause a Carrington 1859-type event. If that event happened today, most of our communication satellites would be gone. Our ground-level uh, power transmission lines and the transformers would be gone. And it would be a minimum of anywhere from three to six months minimum if all the entire production and distribution was working, but it could be up to as long as three years to repair the distribution power networks. Uh, we don't have redundancy uh, or backup power protections for the power grid which was passed as a bill three and a half years ago by the Congress, believe it or not, by, by the Congress bipartisan, but blocked by the rhino uh, Alaskan Republican Senator Lisa Murkowski. So I know Mr. Cock was called for this. There's 40,000 scientists in his uh, scientific organization. I've called for it repeatedly, and so have you. This government better get off their stick, because there's one thing that's going to really clo- clobber our civilization in the next, say, two to five to ten years, it's going to be a CMA that's going to knock out all our toys, our power distribution network, our ability to pump gas, 
and the pandemonium that will ensue will be unbelievable. And it won't be controllable by the police or military. Because when people are starving to death, uh, you can't control them, even if you've pretended to think that you've disarmed them. Ha, 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 as if that's going to happen. So um, tell us more about space weather, about what's going on in terms of these other issues like this building uh, characteristics of another possible CME. Yeah, that CME for the, the Cosmic Carrington event, and uh, it, it was finally rated as, a, as an X-54. Now, if that happened today, it would be like you said, because we're so inter-tied now with, with wires, and essentially what happens is um, the flare will hit, and, and almost immediately, within five to ten minutes, there will be a bathing of the surface of the Earth with ultraviolet radiation. Now, you, that, you're not going to get much... Um, you get that before get, you even get the, electro, the electromagnetic surge. In other words, the first thing you'll notice is that you're getting burnt, or your, sting's been, your skin's been flicked by a real strong elastic, or your eyes are on fire. Uh, before even the EMP pulse knocks out the power grid, you're going to notice that things don't feel right if you're outside. That's right. right. That's right. And you better, uh, you better, the thing to do is to keep track of what's going on in the sun. For instance, right now we have a sunspot has is, is been designated AR1640, and it has developed a beta gamma delta magnetic field. Now, that's important because the ones, the flares that have a beta gamma delta magnetic field generally, more often than not, will put out a CME, a coronal mass ejection. A coronal ma mass ejection takes two to three days to reach Earth. But when it reaches Earth, and if, it's, if it came from an X-54 flare, then it will, it, <laughs> it, it will disturb the magnetic field of the Earth to the extent that um, we will have all sorts of bizarre things happening. I mean, you'll see auroras in the middle of the day as far south as um, the equator. The yeah. Yeah, the equator. Yeah. And you'll want to protect your head, so you'll want to get into something that's magnetic. Uh, I've got an old dryer downstairs, so I'm going to ask my son to take the drum out, and I'm just going to get inside that. <laughs> Cause it's, it's I think people will understand that these magnetic pulse things can directly affect your brain. One of the weapons, and I've had people requesting for me to tell them what weapons, one of the weapons is actually uh, to, the U.N. are now being issued these dazzle guns, which are basically high, you know, 100,000 candle power LED light guns with a big pad. Uh, if you actually pulse that light at the frequency of the alpha waves of your brain and pair it to an infra infrasound, generated that generates subsonic sounds at the infrasound frequency range and pulse it at the rate of the alpha rhythm and you point it at someone it'll make them seizure they'll seizure like crazy all you have to do is pulse it you get what's called brain entrainment now when you have a pulse from the sun and it hits a pulse magnetic uh, you know electron stream like this it's going to disrupt normal brain activity it you know, may not necessarily knock people down but they're not going to be normal and uh, in fact it will affect the temporal lobe more than it will affect the other parts of the brain and that's the brain that we used to think with and in fact they're already using magnetic pulses as a as the modern form of um <clears throat> well they used to uh take the temporal lobes off when <laughs> when people were depressed hoping that they wouldn't think so much and therefore they would they they would be more passive and then they use the electric. I guess it does help when you cut off that part of the brain. Uh, hard to think when you don't have that part of your brain. It's gone. Right. And then they use electric th th electric shock, shock therapy. Yeah, transtemporal, the transtemporal, thing. yeah, ECT. Yeah, across the temporal lobe. And now Flies to the cuckoo's magnetic. nest, right? Yeah, one flew over the cuckoo's nest. And now they're using magnetic uh, fields. And they use that to cross the, that part of the brain, the front part of the brain. Yeah, well, they're doing research right. at the University of Ontario, Canada, on uh, transcranial pulse magnetic field. Uh, you can actually use the kind of waves that we have, which are healthy ones like the soma pulse, metathera, et cetera, for actually doing transcranial positive stimulation of the brain. But the kind of pulses that are going to come from the sun is a steady stream of electrons 
that's really going to polarize different areas of the brain and it's going to disrupt normal brain intercortical activity. So, uh, yeah, it's going to cause change, strange animal and human behavior. That's why in advance of a major earthquake, there's a change in the magnetosphere and there's a change in the polarity of the various nuclei in the brain and they start acting weird. That's why you see snakes crawling out of the ground from the telluric currents and insects going crazy and and animals getting disoriented. It um, It's a warning sign. Yeah, and I encourage people to get uh, some kind of magnetic uh, metal, uh, usually a steel helmet. We're going to bring on, actually, we're going to bring on uh, uh, Les CMF because they have little wire mesh uh, things you can shove inside a regular hat rather than having to work around with it looks like a steel hard hat. But there are ways of getting a Faraday cage, and then you can slide inside a leather or a normal, normal quote, hat. Um, what people should be realize is that all electronic equipment, if they don't shield it with a Faraday cage type uh, device, it could get fried. I can't tell how bad it'll be. My guess is satellites will be first, power grid second, third will be, uh, you know, electronics like uh, computers, and it'll be it or not, the last will be cars. And the reason is cars are insulated because they usually don't contact the ground, and so vehicles, because they're in a big steel box, it's uh, like a semi Faraday cage, not exactly. But I think cars will be the last to go. If your cars go, everything else is already gone. Okay, and what happened back in uh, 1854 or 59, whenever it was, when the Carrington event occurred, was that our atmosphere was in good condition. That is, it had more oxygen in it, and it had an ozone layer in the stratosphere. If that same event were to occur today, that UV light, which did not hit the surface of the Earth back then, would hit the surface of the Earth now. Yeah. There's something else and I want to ask you a question, and you're a scientist to be able to answer it. If we had a Carrington event, it's a plasma discharge, and you get different waves. The first thing that hits is a high energy, the speed of light, ultraviolet light. The second wave is the high speed uh, protons, and the last is a plasma, right? That's my understanding. Well, the electrons yeah. come in before the protons. Yeah, the electrons, yeah. So it's light, pro electrons, and then protons, and then plasma particles. Now, mm -hmm. what happens is what the government's been doing, and I, I was going to be on this film that they put out, what are they doing in the, in the chemtrails? And uh, Anthony Hilder and his colleagues are doing the video, but they never got a chance to get down here to North County to videotape me. But I had first-hand information because I took care of the pilots flying out of Buckley and Peterson, that they were putting up nanoparticles. And I also had a chance to talk and interview directly Dr. Isley from the World Constitution Parliament Association that's affiliated with the United Nations, a full evening in 1997. And because I took care of these pilots, they were shoving uh, robotic drones at the back of Hercules C-130s, and they're putting these nanoparticles up at 73 to 80,000 feet. Now, what they do is they're converting the atmosphere to a plasma. It's a paramagnetic molecule of nanoparticles of thorium. One in 50 thorium atoms is radioactive. Aluminum, which is also an incredible neurotoxin, and barium, which is 10,000 times more toxic than lead to the brain. And uh, these actually turn the air and our troposphere into a plasma electron uh, sink, if you want to call it. Welcome back to the Neutral Medical Report. We want people to think positively the, about these things. You need to be aware. You need to be aware of what changes are occurring so that if you have a greenhouse, you can grow food. Uh, you need to be aware that if there's an ultraviolet surge from a CME, it can also wipe out the uh, crops. A strobing of ultraviolet light, which I think happened was in July of last year, we had a UV strobing. If that was really yeah. significantly worse, we could have literally wipe out the entire corn crop or the grain crop uh, across a huge swath of northern, northern hemisphere. If it occurred across Russia, their buckwheat crop would fail. If it occurred here, our corn and our wheat and other grain crops would disappear. And the reason is all you have to have is UV shock, and they, they just stop growing. And especially when you have monoculture crops, like these genetically modified or monoculture crops, are more likely to actually be fragile to either pathogens or one type of toxin because some other versions of that same uh, crop genetically might be more UV resistant, but uh, in this case they're not. For example, we know that certain flowers like the Rhododendron Caucasicum, which is a flower that grows up in the mountains of Georgia, can grow in very avidly and fine at 14,000 feet 
which the ultraviolet radiation would kill any other regular flowering plant. But it, these plants have a tremendous amount of antioxidants, which is why if you use them, which they put them in kefir yogurt, they have antioxidants to protect your brain and your nervous system and your heart. So um, there's a lot of science to this. But I think we're moving to a time where it's obvious with the jet stream, with the destruction of the ozone layer, with the destruction of the Macondo drill site at two years ago, uh, we're heading into an ice age. So if I were to say what's going to happen in the next, say, uh, eight years between 2013 and 2020, I'd say we're going to be obviously into a cooling period, even going to a modern type every 360-year ice age. Number two, we're going to have economic chaos. We're going to have a devaluation of the dollar probably a bank holiday by later this spring at the latest this fall we're probably going to have a gun grab attempt but it's not going to work and you'll have state nullification occur you're going to start seeing uh, serious inflation the way it'll happen is you'll see smaller sizes for different food for example at the same price uh, you'll see less things on the shelf as, as the, uh, there's a contraction of, of availability and uh, you're going to see on the open market countries trying to bid for example the Chinese and others to bid for our soy crop and eventually we'll actually have to have embargoes where we'll stop shipping to countries even if they can bid more for a specific crop so the farmer is trying to stay in business. I expect that um, food shortages in food prices, especially meat, because we've been pushing on the alcohol agenda from the idiot Obama, we're going to find meat prices double by next year. Um, I think that uh, if people don't get out of the dollar, they're going to get in a heck of a shock. Uh, you know, it doesn't solve all the problems, and you don't need to grab on one issue like the doomsday preppers. But I think if you're prepped, if you have food, water, shelter, etc., and one of the latest developments that I'm going to be promoting is called a solo stove, which I think is one of the best stoves out there. It's a portable backpacker, and you should have your grab-and-go packs. You should be able to do what I call the two rule, be ready to hunker down for two weeks and up to two months. And after two months, if you aren't in your facility away from a big city, with a group of people that has a permanent shelter like a um, uh, turtle tough shelter, you don't have a community that can protect each other and grow food and take care of each other, you're in big trouble because if you're near any large city and it's beyond two months, you're literally in a uh, world warrior situation. And if people say, well, that can't happen, I say, well, don't say can't. Uh, can't is a good thing. We, we, if it had a chance of one or two or three in a hundred, you don't even want to chance that. You don't want to put yourself and your family through that kind of horror. Uh, and if people are prepped even for the basic things like a hurricane or extreme weather, I expect to see some very extreme weather this winter uh, and next year. And the extreme weather will take up power grids, backup power supply for nuclear reactors. I expect that uh, we're going to see in the next few years increased volcanism, sinkholes, earthquakes, and volcanoes. And we're going to see increasing signs in the heavens like it says in the Bible. Uh, which means ultraviolet holes. Uh, we're going to see the approach of large objects in 2013. They're going to scare the heck out of people. You know, the, this uh, comet that's going to pass that Professor McKinney's talking about is, is something like, uh, I think it's what, 16 times brighter than the moon? It's going to be passing uh, in January, the tail of it, but we'll see it very clearly in the sky. to Mars coming up uh, in October 3rd of, of this year there's a lot of changes that are going to occur and this isn't speculation I mean we can tell people we don't necessarily have a, an absolute time but we can give time windows but as I say when you're baking pancakes or a cake and you see all the ingredients on the counter and then you get whistleblowers that come out in pain of death like Don Moore's whistleblowers or Pastor Butch Paz or Doug Hagman uh, you can't dismiss these even though they quote, don't have paper remember now the Re reference to paper is because uh, Joyce Riley uh, presented some information to the Pentagon was regarding depleted uranium. That's simply easy to obtain if you just do a FOIA request. If you're doing a black op operation which is against the U.S. public and against the military and you're threatening to kill military families, this is not something where you're going to get paper. You might, if you ever got the name of the individuals and they're tapping every phone, fax, and email, uh, for these people to meet, they have to take out the SIM chip and the batteries of their cell phones because it can be two-way devices, and every phone, fax, and email on the planet has always, not just once in a while, has always been monitored. I have this right from uh, the Virtual World Project where I took care of employees in the mid-90s, and uh, since the early 1980s, that's now 30 years, everything, everything on Earth with an artificial intelligence supercomputer array 
in every country is monitored. That's why they had a problem with Project Echelon back in the late 90s, and they debated in the European Parliament and got really mad over the fact that basically American-based Echelon was monitoring even conversations and private political discussions between politicians in Europe. So, you know, people better damn well wake up and not uh, attack the messenger because we think we don't want to believe Deagle. He's a nut. He thinks he's a damn smart. No, no, I just ask good questions. And I ask people, please don't believe anything I say, because if you don't ask the question yourself, you can't own the truth. And once you own the truth, you have to act. If you just hear us, it's just entertainment, and say, oh, well, that's weird. Man, I'm going to go back to my uh, my dart throwing or my bowling or go to dinner or watch a movie and get myself distracted. No, no, if you ask the questions, if you don't believe a damn thing, you say, that's great, I don't care. All I want you to do is ask better questions. And then when you own the truth, even if it's only a portion of it, you're going to be forcing yourself to do something about it. What do you think, Ann? Well, that's right. Uh, you know, it's real easy to get into denial. You know, the sun yeah. got up, rose yesterday, and it's going to rise today, and it's going to rise tomorrow, and I'm going to live the way that my grandparents did and my parents did, and I'm not going to pay any attention to the things that are going on around me. Not. But I tell you, if a UV pulse comes... And my, my mother was... Sure. My mother was... If a UV pulse yeah. comes... My mom was uh, just a... Um, how, <laughs> yeah... Yeah, go ahead. Okay. If and you're not prepared, you're just going to get a hell of a shock. I, I remember my mom was uh, ends before up the, in the hospital with a very bad sunburn, and it dies from that sunburn. You're going to know that the next thing is that's coming down the road are serious. And I hope it doesn't take a child right. Uh I remember a comment. Right. I, I remember a comment by a mom before the Second World War. She said she was a teenager then, and I was born in '52. She was 26 at the time. Uh, so that when the Second World War came uh, about, which was 12 years earlier, she was a teenager, and she said she remembers what her mom and everybody said. They thought the young men that went off to war would be back in two weeks. <laughs> Nobody with two clues together doesn't realize that we're in the economic phase of World War III now. We're in a phase that the global bankers, the most powerful tool they have to make more wealth, to get more power, more control, is war. The second most powerful tool is debt. And debt and war are in are the twin minions of hell, you know. And people don't understand that the bankers are masters of the prestidigitation of war and debt, and they're they're gathering this, the storm clouds of a global conflict here very shortly. And that conflict is going to be probably started off with the next phase of a global uh, trade war, a financial war, because if they devalue the dollar, which I expect sometime in the next. Uh, six months of a year by about 30 to 40 percent number one all your assets everything will disappear by that much because it's basically a form of theft <clears throat> it also means a third of the debt will disappear which will kill uh, foreign investment it'll also uh, tick off a lot of countries like China that have a tremendous amount of our debt and it'll uh, cause an economic catastrophe the so called kicking the can down the road with Bonner crying about him being re-elected this guy's a fool um, they haven't solved anything when it comes up in March, there's enough uh, conservative Republicans and Libertarians, they're not going to go for an extra couple trill. A couple more trillion thrown in the sack of Obama, Obama running around like a maniac trying to spend as much money quickly because he's going to try to destroy America with debt. And it's not just America, by the way. The U.S. Reserve is a reserve bank for the world. So the world is drowning in debt. And the bankers, as they say, the bill that they need to pass is, we shall not write any more blank checks to bankers' bill, the Glass-Steagall Act. But no one's moving on it. We'll see. Take care, take action. You have to own the truth. Ask the questions. Own the truth. And take action. <laughs>